Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Continue and save. And it is nice that even though we abandoned Yoshi when going in the castle, we still have him when we leave. So we have Yoshi for this next level here. The Cheese Bridge. Doesn't look like cheese to me, but oh well. Maybe it's just very stale cheese to the point where it looks like wood. Ugh. This is an interesting level. We have some conveyor belts. And once again, this is a level that the Cape Feather could absolutely destroy. In fact, I probably should have gone back to the top secret area, but oh well, I might as well show some of the game's assets off. I like how there's three different pathways. It seems like at this point in Mario, they weren't really bothering with just, oh, we'll put a couple hills here and a couple enemies there, and that'll be the level. They were really showing their imagination, their creative ideas in the levels, and I like that. I mean, in Mario 1, this kind of level design was unprecedented. It was mainly just, oh, you jump over a couple enemies here and there. But they were really in the groove of things now, and hello. Alright. So, that was a wing thing. The wing thing is kind of rare. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the only instance it appears in the game, if not, like, one other instance, which I don't even remember where. But, yeah, if you get it and you ha happen to have a Yoshi. If you don't have a Yoshi, it does nothing, by the way. But if you happen to have a Yoshi, it turns you Yoshi blue and sends you to a bonus game here. Which, blue Yoshi is the best Yoshi. As we'll come to discover in later parts of the game, there are different color Yoshis. And the different color Yoshis have different abilities when they spit shells out. The green Yoshi just does whatever the shell does. He doesn't have any sort of special effect. The blue Yoshi here, no matter what shell he swallows, he will get wings. Which makes him incredibly powerful, like we had the wings in that previous area, which, by the way, we didn't get to show off the normal ending because we ended it there with the blue Yoshi stage. But I'm also glad they thought of that because that part of the stage required that we had a rope, which, um, Yoshi can't climb the ropes, so we would have had to have abandoned him there. But you can see here we have a red shell, take it with blue Yoshi, and he can suddenly fly. It's why blue Yoshi is probably the best, because the flight is the best ability for Yoshi, and he can still get the other ability, like he still shoots fire because it's red. Oh! Uh... All right, on to castle number four, which, by the way, yeah, that's uh, that's it in terms of this whole world. We just have the uh, Cookie Mountain and the Cheese Bridge in between castles three and four. Uh, there is a separate pathway you can take to get to castle four, and you completely ignore castle three doing it, but we're just doing things the normal way, and yeah, that world's pretty short. But we have Ludwig's castle. The order of the Koopalings is very different here than it was in Mario 3. Blue Yoshi, I don't want you going in this kind of level. I don't want to lose you under any condition. Very odd looking castle here. Oh, these guys, those are a little, um, kind of new, like, variants on the Buzzy Beetles that makes them more like the Dry Bones. They're like mummies that shoot spikes out. Oh, this part, okay, we need to run. Oh, but the cape, ah! Oh, the cape feather made us fly! Okay. Oh, that's bad. Okay, yeah, that's a death. Um, I could walk all the way back to the top secret area, but... I'll just take the level on as is. The cape feather didn't seem to help me much there because I would accidentally fly into the spikes up top. I don't know that there's mummy beetles, as I'm calling them now, because they're normally buzzy beetles. Those mummy beetles, I don't know that they ever come back in any Mario games. I don't remember them being anywhere. Please make it, Mario. Please make it. Um, um, where's the end? Uh, oh. Okay, we gotta be a bit quicker there. Do we have anything over here? We have a cape feather, that's good. And I think there's actually another one towards the end of this in the green, uh, green switch block. Oh, well, uh, sure hope there is, because we just lost that one really quickly. Okay, there is not. Oh, well, let's just face Ludwig as is. And Ludwig has a very unique battle. Uh, in that he spends the whole battle shooting fireballs, which is, I believe, the first time we could see any Koopal incapable of doing this. And he also spins around a shell, kind of like how the Boom Booms did in Super Mario Bros. 3. Oh, I'm gonna need you to be on screen, pal. Ludwig probably has my favorite battle in this game, just because it's kind of a callback to the Boom Booms. He shoots fire, which is a first for the Koopalings, and it kind of makes them closer to their father, Bowser. But he's also a unique battle. As we will see from this point on, the rest of the Koopalings in this game are just kind of rehashes of the previous fights. Eventually we get to Wendy, who's just kind of a repeat of Lemmy. Um, 
Oh, what else is there? There's uh, Roy. I'm pretty sure he's just a repeat of Morton. That sort of thing. Uh, oh. We just injured a mountain. I didn't think we could do that. Ludwig von Koopa's days of composing Koopa symphonies in Castle Number 4 are over. Dang, all he was using composing symphonies? Why do we even bother fighting him? The forest of illusion lies ahead. Mario must use his brain to solve the puzzle of this perplexing forest. And I love the detail how the hill there now has a band-aid on it because we had launched the, the castle into it. <laughs> 